All right, come on, come on. All right. Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. And we are excited to continue our study. We have been talking about the parables. So we are going to, uh, excuse me, just find my place in my notes. Yeah, it's called the power in the parable. So we've already had the sower and the mustard seed, um, the weeds and the two sons. And so tonight we're going to do the parable of the hidden treasure and the parable of the pearl. And our own pastor, Prophet Leslie, is going to be bringing that. So, uh, Pastor James, could you start us off in prayer and then we'll turn it over. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you, Lord, today, Lord, we pray that your spirit flows through Minister Leslie today, Prophetess Leslie today, that we would be able to hear and understand and be transformed through your spirit by what we learn about what you have for us today. Lord, we pray that this the message and the, the teaching edifies us, strengthens us, encourages us, convicts us, and moves us to where we need to be as men and women of God. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Miss Liz, let me pin you at the top and take it away. Amen. Um, good evening, everybody. I won't be before you long. Um, we are talking specifically from Matthew 13 and 44, and then also Matthew 13, uh, verses 45 through 46. So I'm going to read those first. And then, you know, I always got to read a definition. So we're going to read a definition after that. Um, just kind of like a, um, a Britannica encyclopedia, really kind of definition of a kingdom of God. Um, because there's, th th that is such a broad, like debated, heated topic in Christendom. So uh, we're not even gonna get into the, the tenses even, quote unquote, of the kingdom of God here, there, now, there is a lot to it. Um, however, in these verses, I want us to just kind of touch on these verses. We're gonna go on the, um, the definition that I found. And then we're going to read through some other scriptures because for me, I don't know if you're anything like me, but I try and find like a connection, you know, when it comes to scriptures, because I've said this before, a lot of times when God uh, has something be quote unquote repeated in scriptures, almost like, Hey, I want you to pay attention to that special attention to this. Right. Um, and so a lot of times with the parables, like for instance, um, uh, you know, the parable of the talents, the parable of the talents, and even um, these, the parables we're going to be talking about, about tonight uh, with like the hidden treasure and the pearl, obviously the pearl and the hidden treasure, those two connect, but in my head, I don't automatically draw a connection to, you know, the parable with the talents, the, the ones, you know, that are hidden. Um, however, there is a repetition of the usage of, of the field in several of these parables. So there is something symbolic there that we do want to pay attention to because that is a kind of a form of a of repetition in scripture. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read those scriptures. <laughs> All right, uh, Matthew 13 verses 44 through 46. Um, so Matthew 13 and 44, I'm reading from the New Living Translation and says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Okay, those are gonna be the verses that we focus on tonight. Um, so I'm reading you a um, definition of the kingdom of God from uh, the Britannica. Um, you can find it on Britannica.com. Um, and it says kingdom of God, also called uh, kingdom of heaven. And the reason why I wanted to go here is because um, a lot of times when we're giving a, um, like a verse in scripture, we wanna make sure that we find out what's going on around it, what's going on at that time. Um, and even we wanna have kind of a sense of even what the topic is even kind of meaning. So that's part of why I'm giving a definition. Okay, uh, and then and even uh, contextually, what that would have meant for the readers or even rather the hearers at the time, because a lot of this was spoken, obviously, with it being parables. Um, so kingdom of God, also called kingdom of heaven in Christianity, um, considered by some the spiritual realm over which God reigns as king or the fulfillment of, of on earth of God's will. Um, so I definitely agree with that. And I'm going to read a verse to you after this as to why. 
um, for just kind of our focal point. Again, we're not we're not touching on the tenses, not the here, now, there. We're not touching on that. Um, we're just going to focus on that topic. Um, so the phrase occurs frequently in the New Testament, primarily used by Jesus Christ um, in the first three Gospels. It's generally cons considered to be a central theme of Jesus' teaching. So you'll see that kind of thread throughout. He has a purpose as to why he's teaching what he's teaching, uh, parables and things like that. He's giving, you know, his disciples and those that are listening and those who have ears to hear keys and gems as to how to access and how to be a part of the kingdom of God and also to how to further it. Okay. Um, though the phrase uh, itself rarely occurs in pre-Christian Jewish literature, the idea of God as king was fundamental to Judaism. Um, and Jewish ideas on the subject undoubtedly underlie and to some extent determine the New Kingdom, I'm sorry, the New Testament usage. Behind the Greek word for kingdom, basileia, lies the Aramaic term malkut which Jesus may have used. Malkut refers primarily not to a geographical realm or area, like I was saying, there's that those many debates about it, right? Um, nor to the people inhabiting the realm, but rather to the activity of the king himself, his exercise of sovereign power. Um, the idea might be better conveyed in English by an expression such as kingship, rule, or sovereignty. Um, so we can we can kind of go with that theme in those scriptures even tonight about God's rule, his sovereignness, right? His sovereignty rather over our lives, over uh, what we do with the gifts and the talents, right? According to the parable that he's given to us, amen? Um, for me, again, with contextually, I always, it's always a good idea to read some scriptures before and some um, after. I can't remember the, uh, the recommended number, but uh, even if you go to the previous chapter, I feel like a lot of what, um, Jesus was even teaching what it kind of uh, boils down to comes to this, this scripture, like the purpose as to why we want to build and further and be a part of and find the kingdom of God. I feel like kind of uh, his motivation behind saying this is here. So this is Matthew 12 and, uh, and verse 50. And just contextually, Jesus has been doing a lot of teaching, okay, in these um, chapters, including uh, chapter 13 that we're in. Um, but chapter 12, he's also in the midst of teaching and his uh, natural brother and mother come basically and they're like, hey, um, Jesus, your people are outside and they want to talk to you. And Jesus is like, um, yeah, I'm with my people, okay? But verse 50 says, anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And so it's that that is our um, our motivation. Like we find our our place in the kingdom of God through obedience to whatever it is um, that our king has has required of us. Right. Our king has asked of us. Um, so again, verses 13 and 44, we got the parable of the hidden treasure and then um, the parable of the pearl. Um, so I'm going to go, we're going to go through um, 13. And I know we touched on some of these areas before. We're not going to go through the whole thing. Um, but I do want us to read um, some of that because it does have a connection. All right. Um, so we'll go from verse one. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds again gathered right? Remember, we, he's doing all this teaching, um, gathered that he ended up going, uh, basically, in summarization, he ended up going into a boat uh, where he could essentially speak to a larger uh, amount of people, whether his voice could kind of be heard in a larger um, kind of space, more open space. Um, then he told them many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell among the path, this should sound familiar to you, and the birds came and ate it up, some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so if we fast forward there, we know that some of the uh, the people that we encounter as Christians, right? This, we know that we know that piece. That's the people that we encounter in Christendom or rather those who, who've encountered God, right? The the different ways that whether it um, it sinks in or get bur gets burned up or eat up, right? Those are the people that we encounter there. Verse 10 is funny because, you know, the, the disciples, they get a little bit of, of authority and they think they have the right to then question Jesus. Uh, verse 10, they, they start questioning his method. So the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people that bring parables?" right? So he replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Um, I'm going to go back. Sorry, I'm going to go back to NLT. Because I love the way the NLT just puts it really simply. 
Um, okay, verse 11 again in NLT says, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. What a privilege, right? As his children, as his disciples, right? We have a, I wanna say upper hand, but we have an upper hand because of our relationship. It's kind of like if you grow up in a household um, where everybody speaks Spanish, right? You have some knowledge, some head knowledge and some understanding of that language, right? And so they're right up on Jesus, life on life with him. And so they are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. They understand this parabolic uh, language. Um, then in verse 12, it says, to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given and there will be an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken from them. So to my fellow brothers and, and sisters in Christ, be encouraged when you read these, uh, uh, these parables. Don't feel like it's impossible because right there, Jesus just told us that we will gain more understanding. So don't just skip over the parables. Like, Jesus, why are you speaking to me in parables like the disciples, okay? Uh, we have the opportunity to gain uh, more understanding the more that we receive from him. So that's, I wanted to read that as encouragement because sometimes when read the um the parable sometimes it can be like lord what right some of them can be really simple and really clear especially depending on the version that you're reading but others can be like what right um and some of it takes a a, a digging almost right if we're using that same parabolic language even a lot of he talks about the fields a lot he talks about the crops and things like that a lot in scriptures and there's reason for that not only because he was talking to farmers and to and to fishermen and things like that at the time but also because there is some work that there's some toiling that's going to be required to get uh, what's at the root there, right? To get what's really been planted um, that's that, that the Lord has even planted for his people to uncover, okay? All right. Um, and then he says in verse 13, that is why I use these parables. For they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really listen or understand. Um, and then he goes on to say how that fulfills the scripture in Isaiah. I'm gonna fast forward in verses. <laughs> All right, I'm going to fast forward to verse 24. Here's another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night as the worker slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the, when the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew, okay? I'm going to go down to our our verse, right? The kingdom of God is like a treasure that a man discovered in a field, okay? Oftentimes with field, you have garden, you have grass, you have these, these seeds that are often planted there. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he, he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Now, for me there, um, when you think of uh, a field, what, what kind of things do you, do you typically find in a field? Just think, I want you to picture a field, and then I want you to describe for me what you see in your head when you think of a field. And anybody can go. Food, crops, yes. Mm-hmm. Corn, wheat, greens. Those are some good fields. Weeds. Yes, yes, right? We just, he just, he just mentioned that in, in the scripture, that there's a possibility that can be weed, that weeds there. There's a possibility that there can be those good crops there. Um, and what the enemy tries to do sometimes is he'll come and he'll try and sow these little seeds, right? Among the things that God has tried to plant um, and to, in order for it to become almost like confusing, in order for it to almost become um, like a picture of mixture, right? Um, but we as his disciples, he's given us discernment. He's given us the ability to know the difference between uh, the wheat and even the crop, right, as that thing continues to grow, because he then gives instruction in, the, in those uh, those verses. He talks about letting them continue to grow, and then once it, it's grown, he's like, you know what? We'll separate it because we're obviously when this thing comes all the way to a head, literally, we're going to know the difference between what's going to be good and what's not going to be good, what's going to be useful and what has to go. Right. And so even when we think about uh, the treasure that can be found in a field, right, um, with different um, even areas of the kingdom, right? We have, uh, if, you, if you think of like the church services that are advertised and, you know, uh, different ministry events and, you know, these great preachers and all that, all that things, it can look, right? Just like the, 
appearance of you know, some, something and someone and even church places, uh, you know, ministry places rather that we can trust. But once we really uh, allow that thing to kind of, I don't want to say marinate, but allow that thing to kind of come to a head essentially, right? Um, God helps us and he gives us a discernment to know which things can stay and which things have to go. He'll let us, he'll identify to us which things even try to grow up with godly things, right? Because when they're both planted, when they're both kind of hidden, it looks like, oh, it, it looks like kingdom, right? It, it looks like something I'm used to. It looks like something that God can can maybe use. But once that thing has to come to a head and even once that thing has to um really present itself before the people of God, even um, God begins to speak to his children and he begins to show what he is on. It's, it's almost like a, 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 a Ichabod and a Kabod moment, right? What thing that's been planted um, and tries to present itself to the children of God in the kingdom of God has the glory of God on it, right? Because those those words even sound similar, right? Kabod means the weight and the gloriness of God. Ichabod means that the glory has departed. OK, and so God is so kind and so gracious and he's so not fooled <laughs> by what things uh, can have the appearance of godliness, even um, that he will uh, begin to speak to his children when those things are presented before his children. Right. It's almost like, um, you know, when when food is presented on the table. Right. He'll help us to discern what things we should be digesting. And so that's an encouragement, even when, with the things that we listen to, right? Biblical, quote unquote, biblical teaching, right? We can't just follow and assume uh, what's presented to us is good food and good meat to eat, right? We have to follow um, the leading of our heavenly father, because again, the, even even in that parable, the earlier parable, it's that he's speaking to the, the person that's going to be the harvester. And he says, yeah, you know, right now, if you pull everything, you're going to you're going to toss everything out right? Because you're not going to really be able to tell the difference. God is not fooled at any point, right? But he is the one who knows how to restore things. And so that's why he's like, you know what? No, let it, let it come to the surface. We'll come to the surface and we'll separate it at that point. And everything that like him has to go, okay? So Psalm 40, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me, Psalm. Matthew 13 and 44, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field hidden in a field. So if you focus on that part hidden, can you imagine that same field that you had earlier? Some of you, you saw all these beautiful crops, you saw corn, you saw greens, right? You saw all these things. And I know that some of us have probably driven past like countrysides and, you know, some of those further parts in Illinois and Indiana, where it's all these crops, these huge fields for, you know, yards and yards and yards, right? And can you imagine going out and searching for something valuable in there, okay? It doesn't automatically happen just like that, right? The way that we find and access the kingdom of God is by knowing the one who has the blueprints and the landowner of the field, right? If you talk to somebody who owns all this land and they have a well that's, that's in the midst of all these huge crops and things, that they can tell you exactly where the well is. Right, they can tell you exactly where an old post is. They can tell you exactly where their old garden is. They know they know it well, like the back of their hand, because they own it. And not only that, but if they if they planted seeds in the past, if they caused things to come to the past, for us that would be like these uh, old revivals that happened years ago, right? God has the blueprints for those things. So if we're trying to access, as we say, like we dig those wells, if we're trying to access those things, if we're trying to access uh, revivals and things like that of the past, guess who has the blueprint, right? But it's gonna take some searching. It's going to take some searching. Searching of his word, searching through his presence, right? It's gonna take some, some uh, 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 parabolic conversation happening. <laughs> And we need to discuss this. Let's break this down, Jesus. What is what is here in this field? How do I access this kingdom of God? How do I uh, add to the work of it? How do I further it, right? Um, so in his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Now, for me, I feel like if you're a part of the kingdom of God, and somebody else may have a different uh, take on this particular parable, but for me, if you're a part of the kingdom of God, I would feel like 
um, in your excitement, you, you, you found it, you hit it, and then you sold everything, right? For me, that's like buy-in, right? Buy-in into being a part of the kingdom of God. It, nothing, the, the thing when I read this, this uh, verse earlier was a song that calls, called, that's called Nothing Else Matters, right? Nothing else matters. Nothing can compare to the very moment that I found the kingdom of God. I was able to join in it, right, and come under his lordship right, to further his, the work of his kingdom, right, these fields need work, right, we even talk about the, the, the labor, uh, uh, the fields, right, the, the fields being white, all of that, okay, all right, and then verse, um, does anybody else have a, a take on that, that second part with him, him hiding it, and then he sold everything again, verse 44, that second part, in his excitement, he hid it again, and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Does anybody else have another take on that? Well, I don't know about a different take, but it's just when what you said just really excited me because really what I heard you saying is our access to the kingdom um, is gonna require effort on our part to even yeah. locate. Mm -hmm. um, and we can't locate it really, because you think about a vast field, we can't locate it without the blueprint. There is yep. only one person that has the blueprint. Yes. So we can't access God's kingdom without God. Mm -hmm. So we got to go the right way. We got to go through his son. But I appreciate that part where, so once you have access that you see it, that buy-in is he had to come to the realization that what he had found was much more valuable than what he had. And yes. he even realized what he had still wasn't enough. Because mm -hmm. he didn't say, well, I'm going to just give what I got. He said, no, I'm going to go sell everything mm -hmm. because I need more than what I have so that I can be able to obtain whole ownership of what I have now found. And so it's just a reminder to us, if we want the promises of the kingdom, we got to be willing to pay that price, whatever God requires for us to be able to have ownership of it. So that just blessed me. I was like, ooh, that's Amen. Amen. Amen, absolutely. So what you said is almost exactly what my note says. <laughs> um, so I said, uh, we know that we know that the we know of the treasure right that lies ahead of us right so he went out into this field right as we when we become Christians we know we've got heaven to look forward to amen um, we know that um, there's kingdom work to be done here on earth um, as well right so we know that there's a treasure we know the the jewels that we want to gain right as people get saved right we know we want God to be pleased with us with the work that we do here um, and even that as we uh, live our lives for Christ, as we actually live Christian lives, it's like we kind of are investing, right? In those things to come, that treasure to come, that treasure that lies ahead of us. Um, and these verses, even 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and he bought it. There's almost like in those two verses, it's almost like it's a, a delayed gratification right because right when we're not in heaven right now because you're still alive so you have a work to do here right <laughs> um and he he hit it and then he sold everything he, he had and then bought the field um and there's an investment and there's a buy-in there for me um i know uh, it's almost like a, i know something you don't know right they hit it a little bit um <laughs> to let somebody else know of this great treasure that they can uncover as well for themselves as they get to know the master and the owner of the field, right? Um, it also let us, uh, with that buy-in and uh, even with them selling everything that they had, even with hiding everything that they had, and this, this echoes your point, it all, also let us know, lets us know um, that we get way more out of it than we can ever put into it, right? And a lot of scriptures kind of echo that, right? Where where we we gain so much more than we ever will have given up, right? And that's, that's that echoes with the work that we do with the kingdom of God, the treasure that we invest in, right? Even when you think of again, another scripture is coming to my mind about the the song that not scripture, I'm sorry, song that says, you know, I give myself away, right? When you give yourself away, it's not like oh my gosh, like okay, I have nothing. No. 
<laughs> like we gained so much more, right? We gained access to this amazing field that's been discovered. We gained access to this choice pearls uh, that are being spoken of as, as symbolically like the kingdom of heaven, right? The kingdom of heaven has has great has far greater resources than we ever um, could could give up and even access on our own, right? When we access the one who has access to everything, um, then we gain so much more once again than we can ever put in. So again, uh, verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Um, going back again to uh, verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, there's that piece of buy-in, but what connected for me earlier that hadn't connected for me before was um, the earlier verses. Let me find it really quick. Hold on one second. Oh, and my phone scrolling. Oh, there we go. Hmm. All right. One second, guys. Technical difficulties. All right. All right. I'm going to read. Um, this is the parable of the weed and weeds, referencing that again. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who plants a good seed in a field. But that night as the worker slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. So that even that little piece, that stood out to me even in regards to uh, verse 44. In his excitement, he hid, right? Because he discovered uh, this treasure in uh, hidden in a field so even if you think about in the other parable when they encountered these fields they encountered fields that god had planted all these beautiful seeds that were planned to to cause all these amazing crops some of the very things that we named even on the 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 live earlier um and then the enemy tried to come and and, and sprinkle in some things that would try and choke out the things of god and so when you think about it with it being the, uh, the uh, revelation, right? Or finding this treasure, right? The enemy loves to come to do what? Steal, kill, and to destroy. And so he would love nothing more than to find, oh, you found a treasure? You, you unearthed the kingdom of God, right? Let me, let me throw some seeds in there to try, excuse me, choke out your hope. Let me try and choke out your belief. Let me try and choke out your faith. Let me try and choke out the promises of God that are still saying yes and amen, right? In terms of the kingdom of God and that it will be established, right? That is here on earth. All these things that he's already spoken about the kingdom of God, the enemy would love nothing more than to try and choke that thing out. Um, so those uh, scriptures actually even, um, connected for me but again the encouragement even like i said earlier is that god is not moved by that he's like i already know everything that the devil is going to do right and i know that i allowed you right just like when we talk about we talked about earlier the verses where he said i i gave you revelation of these parables everybody don't have this access right so he allowed us to find this treasure hidden in this field, right? That is symbolic of the kingdom of God. And so don't you think that he knows that the enemy would try and come and throw us off track and try and do all the things that would distract us from really um, valuing and holding dear to us uh, the, the treasure that, the, rather the, the, yeah, the treasure that is the treasure of the kingdom of God and the treasure that is that of um, the pearl value even of the kingdom of God, right? God is not moved by, by the enemy. <laughs> so we have to not be either. We have to not be distracted and know um, that God has these beautiful things for us in the kingdom of God. Some things we've, we've yet to even fully unearth, right? To, to even realize what it is uh, fully a part of and even our part in furthering it, amen? Um, so that is all I have for you. I just want to talk, touch on those couple little points and show that connection even between that, um, that, earlier uh, parable and even just reminding again I want to read this verse again because again it, when you start looking into the kingdom of God there is so many debates about where it is when it is etc what it is um, and how we can be a part of it but Psalm sorry, I keep saying Psalm Matthew 12 and 50 
anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother, right? When we think of the kingdom of God, we want to think about we access it because of his obedience. We access it because uh, he allows us to, right? He, ex he allows us to be privy to parabolic language, right? And we have the ability to know um, what our part is in the kingdom because we listen and we obey him. And that's how we continue to keep our access, right? No matter what, what the enemy tries to throw, no matter if he tries to throw little seeds in the, the, the godly field, right? That is the kingdom of, of heaven. He's not moved. He's not distracted. He's not discouraged by what the enemy tries to, to throw in there to look like kingdom, right? He gives us godly discernment, right? To know what is of him and what's not of him. And he even uh, gives us discernment to know when we walk in those fields, right? What we're actually focus on, right? In a, if you even think about the field again, the field, fields are huge. Many of them are very, very huge, right? And it's easy to get thrown off track and it's easy to go the wrong way. But when we have the way, Jesus, he will lead us to the kingdom of God as long as we keep on the right path, amen? And we access the one who has access to the blueprints of the field, amen? Amen. That's a lot of good stuff in there. I don't know if you saw Pastor James when you were saying, he said there was also a reverence for the treasure and the choice pearls. So there was a reverence. Did you want to elaborate a little bit or no? Was, no, that was, okay. that was, that was it. They, they really revered. They, they, I can't just find a word with a word. They right. treasured the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah, they definitely reference reference. I guess the, the way to say it is they saw the value. Absolutely. They really yeah. saw the value. Yeah, value. Um, yeah, I mean, this was a good lesson. And what I appreciate, something you even said, even in explaining it, how if you think about this big field, right? And even though you're in the field, you may you don't may not know what you use an example, you may not know exactly where to go to get to a certain place, right? So you can still get lost even in the field. That's, yeah. that's a, a good lesson for us. Even as we are in Christ, mm -hmm. we can still get lost if we are not looking at the blueprint, asking yeah. the owner of this field, because if you think about it, this is the owner of the field. So that means this is his kingdom. So mm -hmm. I got in, but I could still be wandering because yes. I'm not allowing him to tell me and direct me on what way I should go. And so if yeah. I don't let him direct me, I can't find the hidden treasures. I can't, I can't find those deep revelations and understanding. So it's just like what you said, I could read the word and I can get frustrated and go, well, why it don't make sense? Well, the problem is I haven't asked the, the, the owner of the field to instruct me how to dig down and pull out what's in um, that particular um, piece. So it's just this reminder for me of how much we really, one, have to stay humble because no matter how much we learn, there's so much more for us to learn. Yes. So we can't exhaust it. I mean, how many times have all of us probably read this scripture, but there were some new things that came out this time. Yeah, it's hidden treasure for a reason, right? And it's a living and active word, right? So it's not like you find this treasure once and then that's it. You know what I mean? You read his, his word once and then it dies. It's a living word. It's just like when we encounter people, people grow and change. And if they're not growing and changing, then, then we are, then they are dead, right? But we're not reading Dead Sea Scrolls, right? We're reading the living word. And I think that's such a good point you brought out. Even, I think that's sometimes how people even get caught up and distracted and start to compare because they look at somebody else's path to how they got to the treasure. And that's how they end up lost because God has another way for them to uncover the treasure. He has another path for them to go through because there's, there's, there's um, lessons even along the way right? Because his word is living and active, right? So you may need to encounter this crop and that crop and this crop before you get over to the treasure, right? To even appreciate the fullness of what's in that treasure chest. So it's important to stay on the path that God has for us. God has the way for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Did anybody have any questions or thoughts, any prayer requests? Um, you can either come off mute and say that, or you can put them in the comments. Um, a couple of quick announcements. Um, uh, first of all, praise report our own um, sister Darlene. We have been praying with her about some matters. She called me today to say that she got the new apartment. Woohoo! 
That's awesome. She got the new apartment. So once she tells me all of what's going on, um, we will be um we will be seeing how we can help her move because that was one of her concerns. Well, how am I gonna move? Well, we got a family. So so she was super excited about that. Um, so we're gonna, you know, keep praying for her, even just for financial and all of that to so the Lord can help her to get um shifted and situated. And so um yeah, that's the the major announcement. Um, just keep praying for Jocelyn. She's on her way in um, from out of town. That's the traveling woman. She is bringing the word this Sunday. So Ooh, we're whoop. excited to see and hear what the Lord has to say. Um, any prayer requests? Um, I can, I'm praying for healing. I've been having a little, little tummy issue. So all prayers are appreciated. All right. If you know other uh, i'm hearing passage okay i was seeing i could hear him typing <laughs> got it all right all well right. Kevin, thank you so much for this evening we thank you for um getting all of us uh home safely father um even to just have bible study fellowship together um but i pray for each and every person who's not on the broadcast this evening that you would just keep your hand upon them and keep them safe wherever they are father thank you for safe landing um and travel even for pastor jocelyn lord i thank you for no fear no nerves god on sunday um lord miss you roar excuse me, roar like a lion, Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh, let the lion of the tribe of Judah roar through her, Father. Um, I pray that you would strengthen her mortal body as well, God, as she ministers, Father God, on Sunday. Um, Lord, I thank you for um, saturating our church, God, and making it a house of, of prayer even the more. Lord, let it just drip with your oil, God, for uh, Pastor Orr's um, service even, Lord. Um, Lord, I thank you for... Um, Apostle Jewel, Father God, I thank you for complete healing from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Father God. I thank you for no issues with blood pressure. God, I thank you for uh, regulation, Father God, in her body right now. I thank you for no um, undue stress in Jesus' name as well. Um, and I pray, God, in the name of Jesus for continuing to give her um, wisdom, God, even on natural methods, God, on how to even deal with it, Father. Thank you uh, for you showing up, God, as um, Jehovah Rapha, God, even in her home. I thank you for sweet sleep and rest, Father God, uh, for both her and Pastor James as well, God, in the name of Jesus. Um, Lord, I pray for Asia, Lord God, and her children, God, in foster care. Father God, I pray, God, that you would be a father to the fatherless right now, God, that you would make a way out of no way. I thank you for breaking, God, every um, power even of addiction is what I hear. And so, Father, I thank you, um, God, that you have a purpose, a plan, um, and a beginning and an end to their stories. And so, Father, I thank you. I decree and declare that the enemy will not uh, be able to write their stories because he is not a creator, but an imitator. And so, Father, I thank you um, that you are the author and finisher of their faith. And I thank you that you are the alpha and omega of their stories. And so, Father, I pray that you would help them to not give up, God, where they are, but that you would send staff and that you would send friends and she would send family and allies um, God, to love on them well, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the appropriate care, the appropriate medications, the appropriate uh, foods, the things that they need, Father, um, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that you would provide for them, Father. And I thank you for meeting their financial needs. I thank you for meeting their emotional and mental needs and spiritual needs as well. Help them to know that they are not alone, God, in the name of Jesus. Now, I pray also for the Grady and the Harrison families, Father that you would keep your hand upon them as well. Um, God, that you would help them to grieve, Father God, not as those who don't have hope, but Lord God, as those who do. And so, Father, we thank you. Woo. We thank you, Father God, for um, the greater glory that's ahead. We thank you uh, for the treasure in heaven, Father God, waiting upon um, their loved ones that know you, Father. And I pray, God, that as you've chosen and seen fit to leave their family members here, Father, thank you for helping them to know that their story continues, uh, their legacy continues with them. And I pray that they will be encouraged um, to know, Father God, that you still have purpose and plan for them as well. And I pray, God, that they would feel your presence um, very near God in the mighty name of Jesus, that they would know that you are near, hallelujah, to the brokenhearted, Father, that you heal, God, hallelujah, and that you are near to those who grieve even, Father God. I thank you, God, for in the um, for the season, Father God, uh, and the time to mourn, Father God, and I pray that you would let them know when it's time to dance, 
Um, and when it's time for the garment to change, Father God, the garment of heaviness to the garment of praise, when it's time for it to change. And I pray that you will give them the, the discernment to not rush it, but Lord God, to know, Father God, that you are doing a work even through their tears. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you that you're doing a work. And so God, we just give you glory. Um, I thank you, God, for touching each and every member connected to this house, Father God. I pray for special um, strength, especially for Apostle Jewel and for Pastor James. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just pray and we thank you, Lord. Um, I ask you also bless Pastor Darla, wherever she is as well, um, and keep her, God, um, safe, and uh, as well as Pastor Tiffany, God, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Well, everybody, you guys have a great rest of the evening. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. God bless. All right. Have a good one.